everybody, this is Lori, and I am the founder and CEO of Inclusivity, and we are a company devoted to social justice, kindness, uh, the environment, and sustainable fashion. And this is our podcast, Inclusiva Talks, and we are so excited to have Sonia Pirani on the show today. Sonia is a young dynamo, really. She is a um, an artist, which is one of the reasons we're talking to her today, because she's actually donating a piece to our artists who share auction, raising money for coronavirus recovery. But she is also an entrepreneur herself, having started a nonprofit at the age of 11. Is that right, Sonia? So we, we're going to start by just an, an, asking Sonia a bunch of questions. Sonia, welcome. Hi. <laughs> it's nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you so much for being here. So, Sonia, I want to start, I want to talk about the nonprofit in a little bit, but I'd like to start by talking about creativity and how you sort of started um, feeling like you were an artist, how you started that. I think I've always been involved with art ever since I was young. I think one of my favorite classes in school during elementary school was art. I had a very great teacher. Her name was Mrs. Shaheen, and she always got me really into art, and she was just a great teacher, mm -hmm. and she really taught me the basics of art, and that's what got me as an artist today. So, Sonia, when you were younger, when you were first doing art, was it crayons? Did you like painting? What were your... What were the mediums that you liked the most when you were first doing it? I think my, um, I think the medium that was always my favorite was um, just like pencil drawings. I just love to draw. Um, I used to um, stay after school uh, and like an after school program activity. And I just used to always draw. <laughs> that was like my favorite yeah. thing to do. And I think it still is now. I just really like um, pencil sketches and everything. So what do you like to draw? Um, I mostly like to draw people, and then if I'm painting, I like to paint landscapes, so. Okay. So do you, to paint landscapes, do you actually, are you somebody who goes outside and, and tries to paint what you're seeing, or do you more from memory? Um, I think it just really comes from my creativity. Mm -hmm. I might look at pictures, like if I'm trying to, like, imitate a certain type of tree, uh, but other than that, I think mostly it comes from my own creativity, which I think is great. That, that is great. So, Sonia, in addition to loving art, and in a little while, I'm going to ask you about the design you're creating for us so that Perfect. you can just tell us a little bit about it, because I'd like to know that. But in addition to creating art, you also have not just the nonprofit, but aren't you also a, a skater or don't you have another activity that you do pretty passionately? Yes, I love to figure skate and I also play the piano. I think you can see the piano behind me. I, I do see um, the piano. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic, I am unable to do figure skating right now, but I have been working very hard on my piano and I've been memorizing my songs. So that's great. <laughs> now, do you write music? Um, I don't write music, but um, I just like... Um, I take lessons, so basically I'll choose a couple of pieces that I really enjoy, and then I'll memorize them and then perform them. Okay. Um, at the end of the podcast, would you be willing to play something for us? Sure. I'd okay. be... Okay. No, I didn't, I didn't warn <laughs> yeah, you about no, that. No problem. I think, I think that'd that be great. Would, that would be terrific. <laughs> um, so figure skating, how long have you been doing that? Um, I think I've been... I think I've ice skated ever since I was young, like around like five-ish but like figure skating like the actual like figure skating part I think I've been doing since I was around like 10 11 maybe okay and do you actually compete in figure skating competitions or is it more just for fun um I compete and I also um do it for fun as well so um I'll take my time to like learn my pieces get my music mm -hmm. learn what my next skill sets are and then um figure out how to perform my like, piece with my coach, and then we'll decide when we think the appropriate date for a competition would be, so. Okay. So on top of all of that, how old are you, Sonia, now? I am 13. Okay. On top of all that, you're a student. Yes. Um, and are you in seventh grade, eighth grade? I'm in eighth grade. I'm about to go into high school next year, so. Okay. So is that exciting? Yes, I, I, I'm very excited for the new opportunity. I think it'll be very interesting. What are your favorite classes? Um, right now, I think my favorite classes, um, I'm doing um, 
this art class, which is time and travel. And I think it's really great because we get to study different artists around the world and we get to like imitate their type of art. I think last time we did cubism art, which was like inspired by Picasso. And I think that was really cool. Um, and, but also, I also really like my science class and I really like my English class too. Okay. All right. And are you, um, one thing I want to encourage you to do is when this auction launches, which will be around the, the 25th through the 28th of June, make sure you look at the other artists and check out their yes, artists, definitely. They are, we have just some incredible artists participating. <laughs> I'm so excited about it. I so Sonia, you, you um, well, and we're so glad to have you. So thank you for being <laughs> thank here you. with us. You're not the youngest. We actually have one eight-year-old who's participating. Oh, wow. But That's you're amazing. the second youngest. <laughs> Um, and the eight-year-old is participating because I'm friends with her um, grandmother and her grandmother was talking to her about it. And she was just, she really wanted to be a part of the auction and help raise money for coronavirus recovery, which I thought was terrific. So yes. amazing. So I want to now just go over to um, talk a, a bit about your nonprofit because it is unusual for an 11-year-old to start <laughs> a nonprofit. It is not the normal path. So Tell me a little bit about how that happened and what your nonprofit strives to do. Definitely. Um, I've been involved with charity work ever since I was seven. It's always been ingrained with me. At seven years old, I started a project with Feed My Starving Children, and that project is still going on, and we're raising $56,210 for Latant Haiti. And right now... Right now, I think we have around $26,000 and we're still like going towards that goal. And it will feed Latant Haiti for one year, which is great. And then, <laughs> and then from that, I started to um, expand my reach locally. And I've been involved heavily with the CAF agency and I am the youth ambassador. I think I started being the youth ambassador for Dakota, Scott and Calvert County CAF agencies and around like eight, nine years old. And then, me, um, Sonia, I'm going to interrupt you and just ask you to tell me what CAP is. Right. Sorry. My bad. I'm so used to everyone knowing what CAP agency, but a CAP agency is Community Action Partnership, and they strive to help mainly um, homeless people locally with basic necessities of like what Sonia's Hope for Children does. Mm -hmm. And I've always been involved with them. I've always been doing projects with them. Uh, we fundraise from them, uh, for them, and we just do multiple projects with them. And some of our main projects are collaborations with CAP Agency. Um, and then in 2017 was when I actually started my nonprofit called Sonia's Hope for Children. Sonia's Hope for Children is a nonprofit, 501c3, which strongly believes that every child deserves basic human rights, like food, shelter, clothes, safety, health, and education. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do multiple projects like our Christmas bag project or holiday project where we sell 550 bags for homeless children locally around Minnesota, mm -hmm. Chaska area, um, Minneapolis area, and different areas depending on which homeless shelters are in the greatest need and reach out to us. Mm -hmm. And we fill these bags with school supplies, toys, and books, and then we give it to children during the holidays time. Now, Sonia, how did you at 11 decide that you needed to start this? So what, what, what sort of inspired you? I, I think what really inspired me was, as I said before, I've been heavily ingrained in philanthropy ever since I was seven. And I think it was always my dream to start a nonprofit, even at the age of seven years old. It's just that I wasn't able to, I wasn't given the opportunity to uh, be able to kickstart my own nonprofit. And I think that really happened for me in 2017. And why did it happen in 2017? What? Um, I, I, if I recall correctly, um, I remember that it was uh, one of my, uh, one of my biggest speeches that I've ever done. It was in front of 500 people, around 500 people. And I uh, just went up there and I did my speech and I told them about what I do and my charity work. And a guy came up to me and he said, Did you ha do you have a nonprofit yet? And I said, no, um, but I really hope to have one in the future. And he said, I can help you with that. And so, <laughs> wow. yeah, and then that's how it came to happen. And then we got our 501c3 and... That's how it started. <laughs> that is awesome. Yes, it was really amazing. So, Sonia, you said that you make 500 bags for the holidays. Is that what you said? Yes, 500 to 550 bags, depending on the homeless shelters that reach out to us and how many um, children or young adults they have. And who makes those bags? 
Um, my Sonny Stuff for Children team, including me, and um, my team includes Andrea, Olivia, Sarah, and Emily. And they all sew, and they're active with it. And then also, um, we uh, do sewing lessons, mm -hmm. free sewing lessons for the public who would like to learn how to sew. And with these lessons, we hope people um, decide that they want to use their new knowledge to help Sonia Sew for Children. And so often we get um, volunteers from those free sewing lessons. Um, unfortunately, this year, they'll probably be online if we're able to do them. I think we're doing them with 4-H. So anyone 4-H can, um, in the certain 4-H that we're working with, can learn how to sew and participate with Sonia Sew for Children. Um, and then also we reach out to people who already know how to sew mm -hmm. and we give them the, the instructions and the size the bags should be and then uh, they can sew how many bags they wish to sew. So. That's, that's <laughs> incredible and amazing that you are using your art talents yes. <laughs> for your nonprofit as well because that's what that is. The bags are beautiful. Yes. Um, so Sonia, how do you find time to sleep? <laughs> um, I think I've, um, over the years, I've learned how to um, uh, I've, uh, put certain times of my days for certain things. I think in the morning, I wake up and I do my homework because it's online learning now. And I just wake up, do my homework, do my attendance. And then um, I plan out um, what I actually need to do for the rest of the day, whether that's stuff with something for children or maybe piano classes mm -hmm. or just anything else I need to do around the house. And then I just go from there. So, <laughs> and, and how do you balance everything? Because it seems to me that, that um, it would be easy to get overwhelmed because you have a lot of different things. So for you, what strategies do you use to balance? Because I think that would be really helpful for people to hear. Yes, definitely. Um, I, uh, the first thing that I think really helps me is that I'm very, um, I'm bring, I really want to help other people in need. So I think my drive to help other people in need, uh, help, help other people in need, I'm sorry, um, help other people in need is really what gets me going in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, but then also um, I try to get my, my main priorities done first, like my schoolwork and then important on stuff for children stuff that needs to happen currently. And then I move forward with what needs to happen later. So you so. have kind of a, a real plan. Yes. You don't, you don't start your days kind of like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Definitely. You, you have a plan. Okay. And have you always been that organized? I think it took me a while to get where I was. And I think my mother's helped me a lot, especially when I was younger. Sure. But uh, now I think I've got it all organized and the main things that we need to do. And actually today we have a Sunny Silver Children meeting. So we're discussing what we want to do for our next project. So <laughs> That's exciting. So who are your, um, the people who are doing the sewing, are they also on your board? Um, sorry, can you repeat that? <laughs> I'm sorry. People who are doing the sewing for you, your friends, are they also part of your board or are they part of your planning team? Yes, um, some, as, uh, like I said, some people are just like volunteer to sew, um, but my team, yes, um, they're heavily involved. As you can see on my website, it says there are certain positions that they're in uh, and like what they, uh, everyone fundraise. So yeah. everyone picks the amount they would like to fundraise for every project. And then we go on from there, depending on what they want to do. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have the partners lead their own projects because uh, in the beginning of the year, near like January, we decide, hey, does anyone want want to lead their own project was we have a month that's open that we're not doing anything in this month. So does anyone want to um, start their own project with Sonny's Help for Children? And then um, I think before the pandemic, we had an idea to do a walk around Cleary Lake, which is a park near me. But uh, unfortunately, that wasn't able to start. But uh, that was something my partner Sarah was going to initiate. Mm -hmm. And so we were very excited about that. But um, yeah, so my partner is not only fundraise, but they lead projects and they also sew with us. So that's the main things that they do. That's amazing. So Sonia, are, what are your hopes for the nonprofit going forward? And before you do that, tell us what the nonprofit website is, just so we can make sure. Definitely. The Sonia's Hope for Children website is www.sonia'shopeforchildren.org. And there is no apostrophe before the S and Sonia's. So it's just... S-A-N-Y-A-S. -S. Okay. So tell us what your goals are for the future for the nonprofit. Yes, definitely. Um, I think we would like to expand our reach on our um, holiday bag project, Christmas bag project. Um, we would like to expand um, 
more tore out uh, throughout uh, Minnesota. We also take the fabrics from the bags from furniture stores. So we would like to expand our reach to um, more furniture stores in the area because not only are because most furniture stores just um, throw away the scrap fabrics that they have. And so we take in those fabrics so that we're actually reusing these fabrics. And then um, we would like to expand our reach to different furniture stores. And then not only that, uh, we. Uh, We've also been thinking about this. This is very like, um, very like such something that's like very complicated to start, but we are looking forward to it. We would like to um, reach out to those in impoverished areas who would like to sew bags and uh, they, we can teach them how to sew the bags and then they'll be able to sew the bags and then generate money for their families, especially mm -hmm. women. Yeah. So I think that's like uh, one thing that we're, um, going towards. And then also we would like to start a library in Gizr, Pakistan. Gizr, Pakistan is very isolated and um, there are many malnourished people and uh, people are unable to get education, especially women. And there is a school there and they let us know that they would like us to um, um, put a library in there, there so they're able to read in their own free time and learn more um, things that they would like to know. And so we have fundraised books so far, and right now we're learning how to um, deliver the books to Gizr, Pakistan. So, Sonia, how did you choose that community in Pakistan? Um, I, th I, I, th I think I accidentally learned about it because someone was talking to me about it and they're talking about how isolated it was mm -hmm. and how, like, um, uh, there's so many... Um, uh, impoverished children over there and especially females who are unable to get education and um female uh, sorry females are children so many so for children has always been involved with uh, helping other people with education because we think education is the main way to get people out of poverty especially children if they're able to learn in the beginning of their life so so sonia um what's your cultural background uh, my cultural background is actually, um, I am from Pakistan. My fa parents are from Pakistan. Um, I grew up here and my parents just moved from Pakistan over here. Um, my mom also lived in Australia for a while. So does so I, I expect that that makes the Pakistan link even more important to you. Definitely. That's your history. It's, it's definitely. Culture. Okay, good. Um, Sonia, what would you say? to someone younger than you. Now, you're still very young. Yes. What would you say to someone younger with, to, than you if they had this sort of big dream, but it felt, I'm guessing that at times it felt like impossible. Like, how can I possibly do this? I'm Definitely. just like it. So, uh, what, so what, would I would, what I would say is that um, find the thing that they're the most interested in and like narrow it down and figure out what you're the most interested in for Zonis Over Children and it's education, although we do help with the other basic necessities of life. We did start off with um, helping other people with education rights and food rights, and that's what we um, mo mainly believe in. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would figure out what you're mostly interested in and then start your own project project there. It could be a collaboration with different um, um, organizations, any nonprofits that you find, or if you would just like uh, to donate to your nearest homeless shelter or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, find what you're the most interested in and then carry on from there. Okay. I, that's a great piece of advice. <laughs> kind of hone down what you're most interested mm -hmm. in and then go from there. Where do you picture Sonia's Hope for Children in 15 years? I mean, at that point, you'll be an adult. Yes. What, what do, you, do you still picture having that nonprofit as sort of a core of what you're doing? Yes, I do. I would like to be a doctor when I grow up. So I would like to um, help other um, uh, help others in different places with different um, um, health cares that they need. So I think we would like to do more mission projects in the future um, when I have my own income and I'm able to support that. And I think... Um, we would also like to carry on with the projects that we're doing right now that are locally and collaborated with CAP agency as well. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Um, and if you were sort of naming your life philosophy, so your personal philosophy, which I know you're 13 <laughs> and, and I want you to come back on when you're 25, because <laughs> I'll still be doing this and you will probably have evolved a little <laughs> Definitely. over the next 12 years. But right now at 13, if you had to say, what's your core belief? What's your your philosophy about how you want to live your life, what would you say it is? 
I, I, I've heard this quote by Mother Teresa, and I think it really speaks a lot to me. And it's, um, quote, at the end of life, you will not be judged by how many diplomas you received, how much money you've made, how many great things you have done. You'll be judged by, I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was homeless, and you took me in, unquote. And I think that's like a very beautiful quote and really speaks to me. So in your own words, just restate that as yes. to your philosophy. Um, I think that uh, my philosophy is to um, help other people because it's our moral responsibility, especially me as a young adult. Um, I have the ability to help other people, so I really should do, be doing everything I can to help those in need. I like that, Sonia. My philosophy um, that I was taught from a very young age is that it is quite literally my responsibility to take care of other humans definitely and to protect the earth mm -hmm. and that that is my primary responsibility as a human being and that all the rest of it is great but that that is what i am here to do in whatever way i choose to do it and there are a thousand different ways that you can take care of the people around you but i think it's a core belief and clearly that you that's where your core belief is as well Yes, yes, it is. I, I really strongly believe in that. And I think that's what's carried me on uh, with Sonia Sophia's children for so long. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> now, Sonia, I, this is a question that's often hard for people, but I like to ask it. I want you to look back over your life. For you, it's, it's much shorter, so there's less you have to kind of call <laughs> through. So that's a good thing for you. Um, look back over your life and just tell me a story. And it can be, it does not have to have anything to do with Sonia's Hope for Children. It doesn't have to have a moral lesson. It can be, I, somebody, one person told me about when they were a kid and they tried to fry an egg on the sidewalk. <laughs> Someone else told us about um, sort of a spiritual awakening that they had um, that, that sort of brought them some clarity on something. So, but it can be anything. I think somebody told even about being at the beach with their dad. So anything that for you just says, you know, if I'm telling a story of my life, this is a story that's mine, if you know what, what I mean by that. Yes. It just feels like it's yours. Mm -hmm. So do you have a story like that? Um, I think I do. Uh, I remember when I was seven years old and I was um, uh, around seven, maybe eight, um, around where I was like getting started with my charity work and I was working with Feed My Starving Children. I remember the first um, event I actually did was a kickoff event and it happened in this house. And I remember the amount of people who came and we weren't expecting the news people to come. And then we got a call and then so they said, we would like to interview you about your kickoff event. And I had never been on the news before, so I was very nervous. Um, I've done a couple of speeches, but only a few to like not that many people, just maybe like to my school and like the people in my grade. And um, I was very nervous, but um, I got up there and I spoke about what this kickoff event was about and my project with Leave My Starving Children. And I just clearly remember how um, proud of myself I was because I was able to take a step forward and um, be able to express myself mm -hmm. to um, many people who are watching the news channel. I love that. And that just talks to sort of the core of who you are. I think that you believe so passionately in what you do that yeah. you can speak about it because it's right there. Definitely. <laughs> um, Sonia, what do you do if you, you have to have times, I'm guessing, that you just feel like, wow, I'm so tired. I've done so much. What do you do to just relax, to, to pull yourself out of all of it and just breathe? Yeah, I think... Um... I really like to write, read, and draw. So I think those are the types of things I like to do because not only am I like relaxing, but I'm also expressing my creativity. So I'm gonna let out what I'm feeling. And I think that's really great. That is really great. So what do you write? Um, I like to write fiction stories and um, just different things. And I have a book in the publisher hands, as you know, um, but um, so we're working on that right now. So I think that's great. What's the name of your book? Um, my book is called High Tide. Okay. All right. Well, we'll watch for that. Yes, definitely. Uh, I'll be excited. Yeah. It's, I mean, that, what a thrilling thing to <laughs> be an author. My goodness, you are you're quite amazing. Um, what I like about you too, Sonia, is that you're amazing. You're, you're um, smart and engaged and uh, practical, but also you 
always sound humble. You always sound oh, thank you. like it's I about really other people that. and not about you. And I appreciate that so much. It's a really hard thing to maintain. Thank you so you're much. Talking and, and doing so much. So that's a really wonderful skill to have. Thank you so much. It really means to me. So Sonia, is there anything else you would like to talk? Oh my gosh, I almost forgot the yeah, one of the things I definitely want to talk to you about. <laughs> talk to us about the panel that you're yes. creating for artists. Would you like me to show you the panel? Because I finished I would it and it's right next that. to me. It's right here. Oh my goodness. Oh, I love it. (laughs) So talk to me about it. Why you chose that? What? Yeah. As I said before, when I paint, I just love acrylic paintings. And um, especially during this quarantine time, I've had a lot of time to paint. And I think like um, my painting skills have grown a lot during the quarantine. If you see my first painting and then my last painting, they're very different. Um, And so um, I think I've always been interested in acrylic landscapes and I think that's like what I went for when I was doing this panel. And I was just thinking about things that were really beautiful. I just love palm trees and I love sunsets. And I said, why not make it together? And then I was like, and then I remember um, I used to, uh, during the summertime, I used to always go to Minnehaha Falls. Sure. And I think last time I actually biked to Minnehaha Falls and I think I biked like 20 miles. It was I was like gonna say, you need to- you need to tell the people who are listening how far that is because yes. they might think it's a block away. No, because I didn't go from my house to Minnehaha Falls, but I went like somewhere close to Minnehaha Falls, but it was 20 miles away. It was extremely hard, but I remember biking there and I saw the waterfall and it was just very refreshing. So um, I just decided to paint a waterfall along with that. So. Well, it's beautiful. And we thank you so much for being a part of the uh, artists who share. Yes, definitely. Um, we will share all of your information and that way you can, and you can send out all your information about the auction. It's, it'll, it's going to be really great. Yes, um, I look forward you, to it. Do, is there anything else you would like to talk about that I haven't asked you about? I don't think I have anything. I, I think I spoke a lot. <laughs> Thank you for well, having you, me. <laughs> it's such a beautiful job. Would you mind playing a song for us on the oh, piano? Oh, definitely. Sort of I'm thing? on a computer, but um, would you like me to move it towards the piano? Or just want to hear it. Um, I think, it's up to you, but I think it's okay if we just hear it. I okay, think can, sounds I think good. <laughs> Do you want to hear something light or something like in a minor tone? <laughs> what would you like to play? What do you feel like playing? Um, I'll figure it out. Let me try. Okay. <laughs> It'll be a surprise. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I'm glad you chose that because it was, frankly, it was very peaceful. And in fact, I closed my eyes and I was just, like <laughs> meditation. So really, really beautiful job. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Sonia. Again, this was, um, we were talking with Sonia Prani. Sonia's Hope for Children is her charity. And it's S-A-N-Y-A-S, no apostrophe in the S, dot org, if you want to look it up. And she is spectacular, contributing to our auction that we are having in a few weeks. Sonia, thank you so much. And I will know that we'll be seeing and talking to you again really soon. Perfect. Thank you for having me.